Well, we went looking for cheetah and we've come across lions, two lovely ladies of the sausage pride. As I said, you never know what you're going to find. And as you can see, there's some potential meals in the background walking through, some zebra in the distance. Now, I haven't seen these girls stand up yet, so I'm not sure how skinny they are or how hungry they are. Oh, there goes Madame McCurdy rushing past us at a rate of knots. There she goes. There we go. Let's have a look. There you can see Taylor. There she goes. Now, it's not too often we actually see each other out, out here because it is so big and we cover such vast distances um, that that we can sometimes go oh, a couple of days without actually seeing another vehicle down on the valley floor. Bye, Taylor. Now, Taylor, as I said, is heading down to the southeast, and she's hoping that some of the wildebeest have crossed around Lookout Hill. And I think we're going to sit, we're going to stay local. We're going to sit with these girls. I think uh, Jamie had them on a zebra kill a few days ago, but they could be hungry. They do have quite a few cubs to feed. Um, last count, I think it was nine in total between the different lionesses of the sausage pride. So we've only got two lionesses here. The cubs are probably up closer towards the escarpment. There's a couple, uh, there's a few spots that they really like to, uh, like to hide the cubs in and uh, so who knows uh, maybe they'll head that way or maybe they'll wait for the zebra to come a bit closer now there is qu there are quite a lot of zebra around so there's by no means a shortage of food uh, for the sausage pride or oh, there's some bellies as well and uh, in the distance we got all, all happening here yeah, so there we go elephants and just to the southwest of us. And you can hear lots of wonderful sounds apart from the wind. Lots of frogs after that massive amount of rain we had yesterday. And you can hear some of the dwarf puddle frogs. You can hear a guttural toad somewhere. Oh, Ferg found a bird. Oh, there it goes. It was a, looked like a green or wood sandpiper. I didn't get a good enough look. What has Fergus found now? Has you found a frog? Oh, he's showing a amount of water. Um, Scotty is wondering, can the a zebras not see the lioness? Uh, not if they're not if they're not moving. Uh, if they're sitting still like they are at the moment and at that distance, uh, they're probably not going to spot the lions. You never know. It, it, there's a chance, but oh, there looks like a little zebra argument going on over there at the back with that little group. Uh, in family discussion about where to go. Now that'll be the stallion, there we go, kick, kick, kick. That'll be the stallion trying to sort out his ranks. So with zebras, it's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. The oldest female must lead, and if she doesn't, um, and one of the younger females uh, tries to lead, he will bite and kick the, the rest of the harem into place. So uh, even once that oldest female is way out in front, um, there will be a set order that he likes the rest of the, the, the herd to, to, to follow in, and the stallions will generally bring up the rear. Now, it's not always the case, but quite often the case, and especially when they're moving in straight lines, um, there will be lots of, oh, at the back he's, he's sorting someone out again. There we go, he's, someone's out of place kicking and biting, making sure they stay in place. Now zebras can be really, really aggressive. And uh, see, we go, and waiting. Let's see if anyone steps out of line. And I'll get sorted out quickly. Now, it, it, we can never be 100% certain, but it's generally thought that the oldest female leads, uh, she's got the most experience in avoiding uh, predators. So that's that's the reason why she leads at the front, and that's why the stallion wants to try and make sure that his harem isn't a less one come um, time that they're coming to Estrus. And of course, he wants to have as many babies as possible.